Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us with our program this evening. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government that there be ideas and information going back and forth with the city council and the mayors and the city staff and you, the residents. Tonight, we're very happy to have John Elder from New Hope, my city council. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had you on before, John, and we're glad to have you back. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. And you know that I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself out to the wider audience. Okay. My name is John Elder. Uh, I've been on New Hope City Council uh, since 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived in the community since 1988 and uh, raised three children going through the uh, Robinsdale, Armstrong, uh -huh. uh, Plymouth, uh, Sunny Hollow Elementary. Right. So I uh, had, had great experiences with that. I've been a soccer coach in the community, a Cub Scout leader, a Boy Scout leader, and um, so I've been very, very active. I was also a New Hope police officer uh -huh. uh, from 1999 to 2006. Now let's move on to update people on what's happening on the new police station city hall that's yeah. been coming up getting to a good point but maybe you can tell us briefly about the steps that the council city councils took to arrive at the decision that that's what needed to be done yeah. so we'll, we'll start there yeah uh, there was an incredible amount of pre-planning mm -hmm. to see what would be the best direction to go right and we took that out of staff's hands we took that out of the council's hands uh -huh. And there was a um, space needs work group uh -huh. that that uh, task force we called right. them, and uh, they were made up of commission members. Mm -hmm. They were made up of business owners in the community. They were made up of residents, uh, and the this group of people, uh, thirteen individuals, uh -huh. uh, really studied this. They they toured. They found out really what shape city hall uh -huh. and the police department was in they toured other uh, area police departments and city halls uh, they met with the builders and uh, wold architect uh, not the builders but wold uh -huh. architect um, and really took a, a, a very open-minded approach to uh -huh. this and the decision was made um, they came up with a recommendation that they provided to the council uh -huh. and that was that they should that we should get a construct a new city right. hall and police department um, the police department when i was working there um, was horribly inefficient uh -huh. and didn't meet the department of correction standards as well as there were some very major safety flaws uh, in the in the actual uh, police department itself. And then as, how old is the building? It was, uh, I think it was in mid 60s. Okay. So I mean it was, it was time. And so uh, they made that recommendation okay. to us. We then went to the public. Uh -huh. And we did a lot of open houses. Yeah, you did. Um, we had, you know, listening sessions. Uh -huh. And uh, we asked about it in our Leatherman um, survey uh -huh. out to the community. and. People were in favor of us doing that. We provided as much information as possible, what we knew that we are, what we believed right. the uh, increase in taxes would be, so that people were able to really make oh, right. it, make a, a informed mm -hmm. decision in getting back to us. And um, the vast majority of people were very, very uh, positive about it. So. Now, uh, you had uh, you picked a particular contractor that mm -hmm. built the facility, yep. and what were the steps that kind of it went through that they had to do before somebody could to, to they could to go tonight and drive right by the building and see all the see it in its splendor, right? Yeah. Well, they, there had to be a, a fair amount of work done on uh, Zylon Avenue. Uh -huh. And that's the road that's between City Hall and Hy-Vee. Right. And there needed to be. Uh, additional infrastructure mm -hmm. that was put into place and so that was done the year before we even started right. building the city hall they were very very active in that and so we were able to get that get that completed uh, and then we started showing designs to um, to the to the residents right. 
and people were able to see really what is their money going towards. Right. And you know, one thing that I will say about this council, um, having worked for other cities, sure. you know, you really see councils that operate in different fashions. Oh, I'm sure. This is a very, very transparent council. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud to be on that. And uh -huh. it's, you know, we do love to hear from people. Right. Even if they're going to tell me something I don't want right, to hear. Right, right. It's still their opinion, and, and I'm always interested in hearing it. No, that's an important part of the process. Yeah, absolutely it is. And so now what's left? What's going to happen next? Because it's sort of like it's at a halfway point, right? The city hall yes. and the police station are there. Yep. But Yep, What's and step number two. Well, they uh, they have already uh, been uh, been working on a new pool. Okay. There is a 50 meter pool going in, along with a current channel pool uh -huh. and uh, another small area uh, or area for smaller children. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a, a whole complex swimming complex, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be exciting, and that will open up in 2020. Right. And what I remember is. The land under the pool was the best place to put City Hall. Correct. So you're kind of flip-flopping because now the pool is going to be over where the old City Hall is, right? Absolutely. And that was the that was the recommendation put forward by this uh, task force. Right. They, they did their first part and said, you know what, looking at all the facts, we believe you should do a new police, right. police station City Hall. Then it was, well, where do we do this? And they, <laughs> right. they toured a lot of sites. Oh, and I, yeah, I toured did. a number of sites right. as well. And um, they came, you know, mm -hmm. came up with, you know, it should go where the pool is. And the pool should be where the city hall is. And so it literally is a flip-flop. Right. Right. And so um, we were effectively out of city hall July 1st. Right. And uh, the old city hall, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, 4401 Zylon. And they moved into, city staff moved into the new city hall June 27th and 28th. Effectively out of the old city hall, that will be raised right. and the construction of the pool will be there. And then there'll be some work on the park and replacing the theater. Yep, yep. there'll be a new skate park amenities and things. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a, a new park. What are, are you hearing anything from residents yet about the city hall and, oh, well, yeah. especially when taxes came out, was there oh, a yeah. lot of... Oh yeah, there were, you know, there were people that were like, how dare you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> and, you know, we were able to actually show the number of mailers, uh -huh. times it was mentioned right. in mailing. Um, they kept track of, you know, really when it was talked sure. about, uh, when we were on uh, cable 12 mm -hmm. our CCX media doing stories on it um, the open houses the listening sessions you know one of the really tough things as a council member mm -hmm. or a city is to engage people who don't want to be engaged right and I understand and I respect that a thousand percent uh -huh. I get it everybody's busy everybody's life is busy um, and I think people get their, you know, something from the city. It's from a city envelope. It's got, you know, resident on there. Right. It's kind of a, yeah, I'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> and it ends up in the circular yeah. file or recycling. Yeah. Um, but then people are like, well, why didn't you tell us? Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've put it in your water bill. We've mailed you <laughs> things. You know, it's it's on our reader right. board throughout right. the city. Um, you almost have to try not to be informed, mm -hmm. uh, at least for the city of New Hope. Well, and there's more opportunities uh, through the internet now. Absolutely. Which has got to be a help. Absolutely, it is. And uh, we have a, a new communications team in, ah. and, uh, and they're working on, on really exploring that uh -huh. far more deeply so that we're able to really dig into that and, and be able to provide right. even more information right. to people who want it. Well, and on the whole, I think you've had, there's been a positive reaction to the what's up, done up to this point. Right? Absolutely, it, absolutely. And you know, uh, I received a call from a, an older gentleman, bless uh -huh. him, coming and says, "Oh, it's a Taj Mahal. You don't need that. <laughs> it's not a Taj Mahal. Yeah. Uh, it is nice. And for people that come into the City of New Hope City Hall that have business to do right. there." with our staff, 
it's nice to have something that's um, efficient and oh, usable to definitely. them. It's, uh, you know, it was done well. Yep, definitely. And then sometime later on this summer, you'll have a grand opening and people can we will. blend their way through. And we will, and I'm very excited to have that mm -hmm. happen. There's still a punch list of things that oh, need right, to get squared right. away by the contractor, um, but we're, we're excited mm -hmm. to be able to, to have that open house. And then you've got landscaping and stuff that needs to get, Absolutely. get done to Absolutely. finish it off. Yep, final touches. Now, we're talking a little bit of de more detail about the demolition of City Hall, because there was a City Hall, there was a shelter building, and there was a hockey rink all there that needed to be taken that, down and replaced, That right? is That is correct. And let's see, and who's the contractor for that? Terra Contractors. Okay. Um, they're the ones that, uh, that did that. Um, and... They're already working on park okay. improvements. Uh, they are uh, working on the, the uh, new cement slab for, uh -huh. for the uh, skate park. Uh, so they're working on the things that they can work on. They want to get ahead of this. Uh -huh. um, all these rains recently oh, haven't, right, hasn't, right. hasn't no, helped the, the at schedule all. at all. But, uh, but they're continuing to, to go on and do this. Um, so if people drive in, they'll still see construction at work. Absolutely, they will for till next right, summer. Till next summer, yeah. till it gets done. And then this summer, um, kids from New Hope or adults could mm -hmm. go over to Crystal to use their pool, and they've always had a joint. Yep, yep, absolutely. There has been a joint agreement on pool passes, so we're uh, we're appreciative to Crystal for honoring that this year mm -hmm. when we don't have a pool to, for these two years when. We don't have a pool to host their folk. I wanted to spend a little time, because very recently, Duck Duck Days, which is yeah. New Hope's community event, was on. Yeah. And there was some difficulties yep. this year. Yep, there Maybe were. you can tell us about what we, and why and how. And Friday night uh, of Duck Duck Days, things went beautifully. It was exactly what Duck Duck Days uh -huh. was meant for. It was a family event, fireworks at 10 p.m., um, great night, weather was perfect, a little warm, but perfect. Yeah. Um, and it was truly, it was picturesque right. duck duck days. It's our 50th anniversary right, this year. Right. Saturday, about three o'clock, we started seeing droves of youth coming in uh -huh. and teenagers and, um, I mean, a, a great more, number of them. More than normal. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And um, they started fighting. Mm. And they were fighting amongst themselves, running around, chasing each other, tackling each other, uh, and really causing kind of pandemonium. Yeah, yeah. And, and it took away the family feel to this. Right, right. And uh, they were intentionally baiting our officers uh -huh. to try to get them to act inappropriately. Uh, I walked in and there were two girls. You could tell they were fake fighting. Right. And as officers approached them, uh, a number of kids pulled out their phones and started recording. Uh -huh. um, there were people that were ejected from uh -huh. the uh, from the duck duck right. days, and it got to the point where there were so many of these youth that they stopped letting anybody in uh -huh. for safety reasons. Oh yeah, right. And. That's sad. Yeah, That's it unfortunate is. It on is. so many levels. You have the lions who right. spearhead this, um, and it, have put a lot of work into it. Oh, the, for months they've right. been meeting and getting right. things done. You have the city folks that have been working on this right. for months. Uh, women of today that are involved, and you have the vendors, the Frankies that you right. know have invested a great deal of money sure. to have product there and to be able to right. serve, and all of a sudden you know. You really don't have the families yeah. there to do that, so that's a loss for them. And and for the residents who weren't able to get in. Right. And that was that was really the thing that bothered me the most is oh, I as I see. was out as a councilman, I was there and I was I was talking to people that were being denied admission. Right. And they're like, We just want to come and see the fireworks. Yeah. Um and the kids came out and that it that was their intention was to disrupt it. Right. And that's again beyond unfortunate. And I believe that this is largely social media driven. Uh -huh. You, No one has been able to tell me why we have um, droves of right, kids right. from St. Paul, uh -huh. from Bloomington, <laughs> um, 
And so, again, I believe this is largely social sure. media driven. I don't have any, any facts it behind that. It kind of makes sense, though. Absolutely. Right. And so uh, we will have meetings here in a couple of weeks, uh, and we will really do a, a hot wash on uh -huh. this and look to see, okay, what was it? Where were the issues? What were the right. challenges? Right. Um, I saw the security plans in advance. Yeah. I, I didn't see any link, right. in any any you know weak spots in the armor, um, and so it really it was super sad. Yeah. And now we need to look to see how do we move forward for our 51st year. Oh right, is there right. a 51st year? Right. And there's a lot of things being being brought about, discussed. Do we do a series of smaller events to get uh -huh. out into the community? Um, yeah, I know the Lions are, are, are willing to, to look at sure, everything. Sure. And, uh, and so it, it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves. Do we not allow un unaccompanied minors in? No. Um, so there's, yeah, so there's a lot that, that we have to discuss and, and decisions that have to be right. made. But the most important thing is, is that um, we have the right people at the table. Right. We will have the right people right. at the table. We have people that are not afraid to have hard conversations oh, good. and there are people that are that are really dedicated to the cause and really want to see this come uh -huh. back and if we can get duck duck days back for year 51 right. um, I know that's really a goal and so we want to make sure that we're we're meeting the the wants and desires right. of the of right. the residents uh, because they were horribly underserved right. this this year through no fault of the lions or oh, the city right, uh, right. or whatnot. So um, that was that was kind of the, the thumbnail sketch right. and long term of, of really what transpired, uh, what happened, and uh, what we're going to do moving forward. Sure. Well, and, and these kinds of events happen in society. So mm -hmm. now looking for answers or what to do, or it sounds like you're off to a good start. Absolutely. As I said, it's it's always an honor to work with the Lions. Mm -hmm. um, they're just such an, an incredible group for our community. Most of the Lions, about half of the Lions don't even live in New Hope. Uh -oh. um, but it's, these are guys and gals that just are out here and they're working to, uh -huh. to make New Hope right. a better place. Right. And so we're, we're grateful. Maybe you are on the... the Far New Hope Farmers Market Board? Yes. Maybe you can talk about what had been, what is, and what will be. <laughs> yes. Um, we had 10 years, and we ran the market. Uh, there were four of us, uh -huh. and, uh, and we ran the market every year. Right. And we're volunteers. Right. And we had it originally in the Kmart parking uh -huh. lot, and then we went to St. Joe's Church, 36th mm -hmm. and, and Boone. They were right. very kind to allow us a, their small lot there. And then we came to Zylon, right outside of City right. Hall, and we were able to have 58 vendors, and it just it just didn't seem like that was enough space uh -huh. and, and enough vendors. There was a lot. There's a for some reason our market being on a Saturday morning uh -huh. was really a coveted market for oh, vendors. I bet. And. The, the people in New Hope and surrounding communities were so good to us about mm -hmm. coming. I mean, there were, there were nice Saturdays where we'd have over 2,000 oh, people yeah. through the market. Yeah. Um, so it was really, it was, a, it was a, great, uh, a, a great event every week. Right. And this year, uh, as we were starting to look at things in December wrapping up, we realized that with the construction going on at City Hall, right with uh, the things that the different board members had going on, uh, we really just were not gonna be able to run uh -huh. a market this year. And so what we're doing now, uh, actually starting next month, uh -huh. is the board will get back together okay. and make some determinations. Where's the market gonna right. be? How's it gonna be run? Uh -huh. And uh, and move forward with, with the market for next year. We're very excited about it and uh, maybe it'll be in City Hall parking lot. Yep. I don't know. Um, but I do know that uh, there's been a real strong push by vendors and residents to have us come back. And uh, if there's any way we can make that happen, we absolutely will. It, uh, those were great Saturdays. Yep. And they were really, 
above it being a farmer's market, it was a great community event. Oh, yes, I think and, so. And, you know, I would go and I would see people, yeah. you know, people I went to high school with mm -hmm. and whatnot, um, neighbors down the block that I don't see. Right. Um, it really was a great community event. And I never saw that as I got asked to be on the board 10 years ago. Uh -huh. um, I never, never envisioned that that's what it was, that was going to be the right. greatest asset um, is that was what a great community event and it just evolved into it and yeah people have been so positive about oh, yeah. that yeah and and people were were very good to us uh, there were some people that were uh, desperately unhappy uh -huh. that we didn't uh, open this year oh I'm sure um, but and again we we all have oh. all have lives right and right. Uh, again this is there's a, a whole lot of work that goes oh, into putting definitely. this in uh, our chair chairwoman of the board Chris Fry worked just tirelessly mm -hmm. um, and again for free right, right. so uh, yeah, so we're it was a good I, I always thought being interested in government and how it works yeah. that it was it's a good example of how a, a resident who has an idea yeah brings it to the city mm -hmm. council and is willing to put the time and effort in, but then to link together and get some help yep. and who knows what you can do. Yeah, and that was, uh, and that, funny enough, that's how I ended up on the board uh -huh. was, uh, I was a relatively a new council member and uh, a resident came to the city and said, do we want to do this at one of our work sessions? Right. And I said, I think that's a great idea. I think we should support this. And the mayor at that time said, well, then why don't you be on the board? <laughs> I said, well, maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I was on the board yeah. for the next 10 years. So um, it was a, joy, it was a yeah. joy to do, and I, and I hope we can uh, resurrect it for next year and rebrand it and really right. be able to, to move forward and have fun with it. Uh, it was a good time. But I think you're right. It gives a sense of community. Yeah. So yeah. if there's more people out there that have ideas that will do that, bring it to your city councils. Absolutely. If you're willing to put the time in, because it's not going to be, it's going to take some effort. Yeah. But it certainly is doable. Well, and that's one of the things that we see with pretty good regularity is people have a lot of great ideas. Oh, yeah. Um, but they don't want to do it. Right. And um, I have a full-time job outside of being a city councilman. Right. right. Uh, and some other part-time work as well. And, uh, you know, we can't do everything. Right. And absolutely. So maybe we should talk a little bit about the different commissions and how mm -hmm. people can volunteer. And you bet. So uh, what commissions does New Hope have? Now each city has commissions that, that do work and present the results to the council, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have four commissions. One is the uh, Planning Commission. Uh -huh. One is the Citizens Advisory Commission, uh -huh. one is the Human Rights Commission, and one is the Personnel Board. Right. Um, each of these are advisory capacity to the council. Um, these are some smart people. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you look at our, our um, Personnel Board, and I think between the three of them, they have like 80 years of HR yeah. experience. I mean, whatever it is, right, it's a right. huge a number. Large number. And, and these folks are donating their time to the right. city to help us stay on track with our personnel right. rules. They're in, they're in charge of recruiting and hiring, uh -huh. and not hiring, but going through assisting with the hiring process. Right. Interviewing, absolutely. Um, they're, they're great to have. Right. And we have so many people that are so good and have so much knowledge in uh, in the city of, of New Hope that, you know, it, we can use talents like oh, this. Oh, most definitely. Councilman Eric Lamley left, uh, moved out of the city, right, had, right, to, right. had to forfeit or uh, uh, vacate his seat right. on the council. And we did interviews for people that wanted to fill that spot, right, right. Um, which is how I got onto the council yeah, in originally. 2007. Right. And we interviewed these people there were good candidates mm -hmm. out there. I mean, th these are smart people. Right, right. with lots of background and oh, bring, yeah. be able to bring experience and oh, ideas. Absolutely, so we, we ended up getting Cedric Frazier uh -huh. on board. Uh, what a gift he is. I mean, oh, just right. a, a sharp guy, pleasant, um, fair, uh, really, really happy we're able to get him onto our council. So, so, we, so we have these different, these different right. advisory boards that uh, advise the council. 
Now, if people are interested, there's a whole range of opportunities for volunteering. So one place is to these commissions. Yes. And generally, the, the commission has a, so, a specific number that are applied to, are, that are uh, put, I can't think of the right serve. word. That serve each year. Yep. And the process, talk about the process about if somebody is sort of interested in mm -hmm. this, what's the best process for them to follow or how can they find out more? And if they want to go ahead, what should they do? Yeah, go to our website, okay. uh, www.newhopemn.gov uh -huh. and um, go to the commissions tab and you can learn about each of the commissions. Right. And there are some commissions that I just wouldn't want to sit on. Mm -hmm. There are some commissions I would love to sit yeah. on. Um, as a councilman, I can't sit on any of them. Right. Uh, however, it, it's uh, you can read up on that. You can see what vacancies there are. Uh -huh. All commission terms, all commissioner terms, are two years in, dura right. in length. And if people want to re up, um, they put in and say, right. "I'd like to be re upped." Right. Um, and so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a neat thing. Sure. And people can go to those commission meetings if they want to learn a little bit more too or, or and then talk to the commissioners. Absolutely. In fact, that's what our commissions do is they do a lot of outreach. Right. And um, the CAC, the Citizens Advisory Commission, actually goes out and, re and researches stuff for right. the council. They did a, a really nice research piece on, uh, on uh, collect on the garbage collection, oh, un right, unified right, hauling. Right. Um, you know, they've done some really good studies for us on different things that, that are gonna come in front of the council. Uh, the Human Rights Commission deals with human rights issues throughout right. the city and, and dealing with, um, you know, really a lot of our different neighborhood things. Oh, right. And uh, they do just a, they do a fabulous job. So there's a form they have to fill out. Yep. And then when an opening occurs, this council goes through those forms, right? They do, and uh, we actually hold interviews. Uh -huh. And uh, and so we are interviewing people, and uh, if they, you know, if they meet the criteria, and and we have the opening, right. and, and they get selected, they're they're put on for a two-year term. So that that is a specific thing that involves you're setting some time for two years. Yes. What are some shorter-term kinds of things that need volunteers in the city? Like I was thinking, the prayer breakfast in New Hope needs volunteers. Yeah. The well, and we actually we are um, we are not doing that at this time. Okay. Um, so uh, that that opportunity is out. Okay. Uh, but I do know Park and Rex okay. has volunteers, um, and for that people have to go through background checks right. and things like right. that, so that we know that in fact they're allow being allowed to be near our youth, etc. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of different ways. Then does the Lions Club use volunteers outside of their group for the like Duck Duck Days? Um, I don't know. No, they okay. do not. They do not. But the Lions are always accepting members. Uh -huh. And as I said, um, I, I've said many times, I'm sure tonight, uh, just such a fantastic right. group of individuals that care about the community and really want to make a difference. So people could do like a, a one-time thing. Yep. They could do something that's ongoing. They yep. could be on a commission. And all of those help out the city. Absolutely. And well, so I've people got to here. thank you yes. since we got to the end of our time here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I really appreciate your spending time and your experience and sharing it with our audience out there. We're glad you've been with us and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Very good. Thank you.